What's up, everybody? It's your boy Trayvon Holly, aka Traylo Changed. Man, um, I try to use this thing as a public diary. Some people say, "Oh, you know, don't put your business out there, blah, blah, blah." Me, I'm a man of God. I'm, I'm kind of like a public expression uh, with my life and things like that. You know, back in the day, a lot of people, especially men, kept their emotions bottled up, never vented about it, never told nobody about what they were going through mentally emotionally whatever that may be and you know you later on find these people um dead you know what i'm saying you find these people dead in their apartment or in their house because they don't know how to vent they don't have a source um to go to i find this to be comforting for me personally i find out i, I meet new people on on youtube that relates to me a lot of men that relate to me and i later on connect with them in person um which is which is dope so anyway um basically i got on here to talk about like as a christian man only as a man i mean other people might feel like the same that aren't men um it's been hard man like coming back to my faith has been hard you know dealing with the you know, I've, I've received a lot of love but then i've also received a lot of like phoniness for real if that makes sense um from the from the people that claim to be christians you know i'm saying i'm trying my best to you know follow the lord like just been submitting to him being obedient you know and like even in the midst of that it's, it's been super hard yo like the temptation has increased my sleep at night has been a fight you know what i'm saying um but the enemy won't win ultimately he won't win he won't have the last say over my life you know i have the last say i have the final say over my life you know i was so mad at god for a decision that another person made for another human decision you know what i'm saying that i decided to say you know what f you god i don't want nothing to do with you no more i just did all this then the third for you you gonna do me like this why would you allow this to happen all that anger that was built up in my heart yo that was the devil's plan the whole time it was the devil's plan if you think about adam and eve in the garden yo god told specifically adam not to eat that fruit that forbidden fruit and he ate that fruit you know what i'm saying and and uh that was the tree of knowledge the tree of good and evil um and so the crazy part is adam wouldn't have fell for it so he listened to his wife his woman you know in the garden and we all know the story but if you really look deeper it can you can you can use that for anything it could be used not even just off of a woman it could be another person you know another person tell you to do something you do it you know and then you're blaming god like all right adam and eve let's get down to the message for real so eve was convinced god told specifically adam not to eat from that tree you can eat from any other tree eat from any other plant don't eat from that tree he wouldn't eat from that he well let's go here the woman his rib was persuaded by another voice by a serpent a liar a deceiver and she ate of that tree you know, God said not to eat from this tree. No, nah, you know, he just don't want you to know <laughs> about this side over here. He don't want you to know about good and evil. He don't want you to know what it looks like to be naked. In their mind, they were probably already walking around naked, but they didn't understand that or have the knowledge that they were naked. It was normal. But they were conscious of it because of that tree. Now, it's probably deeper for a lot of people. A lot of people definitely are wiser than me in the body of Christ and things like that. I'm just sharing what the Lord shares with me. She ate of that tree. All was exposed. She seen things in a different perspective, a different light. And because of that, she knew the knowledge of good and evil. Because she ate of that tree. She ate of that fruit. Now she brings this old husband, oh, oh, you know, talking to her man or whatever. And he decided to eat from that tree. Oh, but God, God told me. He, you know, he thought about it. God told me not to eat from this tree. He ate from that tree. You know what? He was probably mad at God. I'm saying more than afraid he was probably mad at God but God you gave me this woman the first thing he did you gave me this woman he blamed somebody else for his decision God will bless you he will bless you with somebody amazing you know he will bless you with friends that are amazing but you cannot control the decisions that these people make it's sad but it's true as bad as you want to control a decision that a friend makes or your wife or your, you know, your husband, you want to you want to control the decision before it ruins everything that you started. You cannot control everybody else's decisions. 
But what you can control is your decision. The, your decision. How will you react to the situation? And the thing is, as a man, as a Christian, and a young black man, I failed. You know what? I made a mistake. And I'll bounce back from it and I'll be better than I was yesterday. You know? I was defeated for a while. And sometimes I still battle as a young Christian man, like, to not commit adultery. To not fall back into the same traps that I was that placed me in the position that I'm in now. Say no. I don't care. I don't know who I'm talking to. Who receives it, who don't receive it. That's up to you if you don't receive it. But this message is for somebody like somebody like me. Somebody going through what I'm going through. Making that transition and on their way back to Christ. Don't allow anybody else on the outside source. I don't care if God himself placed a friend, a wife, husband around you. Do not fall for the trap of the enemy. It is not God's fault. And it took me a while to let that sink in. Listen to what I'm saying. It is not God's fault that a person betrayed you. It is not God's fault that he made a decision. Oh God, why'd you give me this woman if you knew this was gonna happen? Free will. They're not robots, we're not robots. It's free will. That's just what it is. And that may be a tough pill to swallow, but I've had friends that I walked in the faith with and decided to turn their back on God. People that were bold for Christ and healing and casting out demons, doing the things of the Bible. And they turn their back on God. And you know what? I'm like, dang, God, I feel so alone now. So I'm going to turn my back on God. No, that's a good time to keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody hit rock bottom, but it's a good time to keep it pushing. So if I'm talking to another brother or sister in Christ, yo, keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Keep it moving. God is guiding you somewhere else. He's taking you somewhere else. Shut up. Mm. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. He's taking you somewhere else. I'm speaking to myself for encouragement for myself. I'm encouraging you, yo. Keep it pushing. Sometimes people make bad decisions, Joe, because of the enemy whispering in their ear. You got to choose to eat of that fruit. You got to choose to make that decision to sin against somebody. Like, yo, you got to make that decision. And if you make that decision, you got to deal with the consequences. You know what I'm saying? I will never play victim in this situation because I made a choice to react to something that was done to me. At the end of the day, I blamed God and it was never his fault. So... Don't blame God. That's my message for this.